Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. James here, as ever, for today's ACCA Management Accounting, that's the F2 paper video, walking and talking you through the question on Nicholson Co., which is a section B, 10 mark question, and it's gonna be going through ratio analysis that is gonna be critical to help you pass your next exam. If this is the first video you ever clicked on of mine, hello, hello, my name is James. I'm an ACCA qualified member and tutor from the UK. And on my channel, I help our ACCA students pass their exams for free. So if that's of interest to you, and it probably is because you've clicked on this video, be sure to subscribe below so you get access to all my free resources and all my new videos so that it can be the difference in getting that 50 plus to pass your exam because also, I dedicate all my videos to my lovely subscribers and today is no different. So as you can see in the middle, Hamza kindly commented and really enjoyed my last actual F2 exam paper video. So Hamza, this is dedicated to you, my friend. And if you've got any questions or comments or requests like Hamza, leave me a comment below. And as ever, please feel free to give the video a massive like and thumbs up so that more ACCA students will see these videos as ever, thank you so, so much for all the support for the channel. And it's great to hear that it's helping students all around the world pass their exams. So for the Nicholson Co question that you can see on the screen in front of me, I've put the link to where you can access it in the description of this video. So feel free to go and click that. You'll be taken onto the specimen exam questions and MTQs. And then you'll just need to go into the full exam on there, click that link, and then head over to question number 38. So this is the breakdown video where I'm gonna walk and talk you through my insights, what I was thinking as I was going through this question myself, and where you're not gonna be missing out on those easy marks, because trust me, if you've got ratio analysis like this in your exam, these can be really, really good marks to pick up on. So make sure you stay to the end, pen and paper at the ready, and let's take down some good notes. So before we get going as well, we will need our trusty um, very expensive calculator for our zero budget channel on the screen as ever. And really the first part is about the sort of scenario and background analysis where on the screen here, I'm gonna just go through it if I was you. And to be honest, if I pulled up section, uh, question 38, 10 marks, so you'd only have 12 minutes to do this in your exam. The video is gonna be a bit longer because I'm gonna explain all the different aspects and formulas. But just coming down here, I'm thinking, right, I've gotta be putting in uh, some numbers in there. We've got two percentages, uh, number of times, we've got days on there. So if ever I see days, that means I'm gonna be checking up in the question as to how many days there are in the year. And in this case, it was 365. And you may laugh and go, it's always 365, James. There was one question which they said, assume there's 360 days in the year, just to put students off and to see if they were concentrating and if they'd read the actual uh, requirement properly. So we definitely need to do that there, but I mean, six marks, Phew, got to get those in the bank. Um, we've also been here to, told to give your answer to two decimal places. So there might be a bit of rounding involved on there. Um, and then finally at the bottom, we've got about balance scorecards, different aspects for it, and the, balance, uh, the scorecard uh, requirements for managers on there. So there might be a bit of information in the actual overall scenario up at the top. So let's just start to bring it up on here. Calculators out just in case we need it. But basically we've got uh, Nicholson Co sells mobile telephones. It supplies its customers with telephones and wireless telephone connections. Customers pay an annual fee plus a monthly charge on calls made. The company has recently employed a consultant uh, to install a balance store, uh, scorecard system of performance measurement and to benchmark the results against those of Nicholson Co's competitors. Unfortunately, uh, the consultant was called away before the work was finished. Brilliant. Uh, you have been asked to complete the work. The following information is available. So when I look at information like on this, first of all, I'm thinking, right, why have they put, can you see the little bold lines on there? Some of them are, are blocked out in bold and then some have got thinner lines. So that tells me that, notice on the first little block of four up at the top, that's all in, in dollars and it's all referring to actual currency on there. Whereas the next one is all about number of customers, bills and queries. Uh, and then the final little two at the bottom is the number of customers lost and the average number of uh, telephones unrepaired at the end of each day. So, right, so we've got sales revenue, profit before interest and tax on there. So these are going to definitely link into, I'll try and keep them all on the screen so we can see it as we go through. 
Um, that's better on there. So we've got, first of all, calculate the following ratios and other statistics for Nicholson Co. for the year ended 30th of November um, 2000 on there. So definitely going to need the calculator for this. And we've got the actual return on capital employed, first percentage on there. So if you haven't had a go at this question already, feel free to. But for the return on capital employed, we're going to have to be using the profit before interest and taxation. So the 48 million, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're going to be uh, dividing that by the actual capital employed or average capital employed in this case. So dividing it by Y192, one, two, three, one, two, three, equals times by 100. And notice on there as well, we've been asked to calculate the ratios and other statistics. And the return on capital employed should be a whole figure. So you've got 25% will be the first one. So let me show you if you'd have actually put in 0.25. Have a look to see if you think the mark, that you'd have been awarded the marks for this. So 0.25, you wouldn't have been given the marks. This is where, for exam technique, for this exam, you've got to be specific that it wants return on capital employed on there, and we're going to need it as a whole number. It doesn't say on here a whole number. It's assumed from your background knowledge of going through the cortex that if you're producing information for a management accountant in the future, they're going to be wanting it to a whole number on there. So 0.25 doesn't work, 25% does work. So key thing is to get down there, written in your notes along with the formulas. The next one on here, we have the return on sales, so operating profit margin. So this is where, it, if you got stuck on return on sales, the operating profit margin should have been a massive giveaway for you on there. So you've got to be saying, right, operating profit margin is my profit before interest and tax. So let's put it up on here. So profit before interest and tax, $48 million. So the 48 million, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we've got to divide that by the actual sales revenue. So that is relating to the 480 million. So you've got to be, again, really careful in how you input this. One, two, three, one, two, three. 0.1 times that by 100 to give us a whole percentage. So our return on sales or the operating profit margin for this question will be 10% on there. Three out of six marks for those two ratios. Again, easy marks we've got to be picking up on uh, as we're going through on here. Now, asset turnover is the next one, but notice it's not a percentage, it's number of times now. And what we're going to be referring to here is we need to take the actual revenue figure. So this is the formula that you need, 480 million, and divide it by the average capital employed. So it's actually saying what this ratio says is how effectively we're putting our capital to work to generate sales. And the higher the figure, the better off for us. And there is our 2.5 times that the assets are being turned over into revenue. So 2.5 would be my answer on there. And finally, I'll just bring it down just a touch so we can see it at the bottom. The average wait time for a telephone repair to the nearest whole number on here. Uh, but the giveaway, I'll just highlight it at the bottom on here, was actually the number of days. But the key words on here to look for is actually repair. So as you look on here, so we know it's not to do with any of the profitability or revenue up at the top, but where can we actually see repair? So you can see it here, first of all, that we've got the average number of telephones returned for repair each year. So we've got nothing to do with repairs, nothing to do with repairs. And then we've got the final one at the bottom, average number of telephones unrepaired at the end of each day. So this is a ratio where we need to take that those average number of telephones unrepaired, divide it by the number of telephones returned for repair for each year. That's going to give us our proportion. And then because it's in terms of days, we need to multiply that by our 365 on there. So this is not a ratio that you'll um, see in a textbook or anything on those lines, but it's one that you have to uh, be thinking on your feet in the examination that they, they're looking for you to see about comparisons and actual um, analysis that we can uh, derive some findings for it on here. But let me just pull it up so you can get it written down. So 
take the 804, 804. So that's the average number of telephones unrepaired at the end of each day and divide that by the 10,000 equals and we need to multiply that by 365. So that is going to be in terms of number of days. So let me just pull it up so you can see it in the center of the screen now because it says the average wait for a number a telephone repair to the nearest whole number. So our answer we know is 29.346 days. So the nearest whole number you've got to decide now is that 29 or is that 30? And the key thing to note down here is that ACCA allow for some flexibility. Now for me the answer for this should be 30 on there because it's the average wait time for it and you if, if you've got the average to be 29.34 we can't round that down because that would mean we're missing out that 0.346 um, of an average weight. However, to the nearest whole number technically, because it's 29.3, the 0.3 means that we would round that down. So I'm hoping on here that for my answer of 30, it would be correct. So let me pull it up. So if I put in 30, will it be correct? Whew, good stuff. That always helps. But just to clarify so that you know the insights of the system and the justification behind it, you would also get credit for 29 as well. So you can see that both answers get 6 out of 6. So 29 gets 6 out of 6 and 30 also gets 6 out of 6 on there. Just for you to get noted down, but it's the reason behind it is the key thing on there. Coming on to task two now, we we're asked to calculate the following statistics for Nicholson Co. Give your answers to two decimal places on there. So now we're being asked about the percentage of customers lost per annum and the percentage of sales attributable to new products. So we've got, we're going to be looking for customers lost and new products on there. So let's just take it back up on here where we're definitely going to be using that. We've got the average number of um, actual number of customers on there. We've got the number of customers lost, so definitely going to be using that. So let's just do it one by one so that we can work it through. So for the percentage of customers lost per annum on that, we're going to be taking our 117,000. So I'm going to need the calculator again. So 117,600. Ah, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Don't make that mistake in your exam. 117,600 divided by, and this is where we're going to have to have the average number of customers for that year. So divided by 1.96 million. On there, one, two, three. On there, so we've got 0 0.6. And because as we come down, can you see we've got another percentage? You've got to give it to, uh, an answer to two decimal places. So times that by 100, and that is going to be 6% for us for the first one on there. Okay, so that's the first one, one out of two for us on there. And now for the sales attributable to new products. So let's come up here. And as you can see, we've got sales attributable to new products of eight million pounds. And you've got to think to yourself, uh, logically from a business perspective, without me highlighting it on there, that from that eight million pounds, that is also going to be included within the total sales revenue. So to get the basis for the percentage of sales attributable to new products, we would simply take eight million for the sales attributable to be new products, divide that by the 480, one, two, three, one, two, three, on there, that equals, now, let me pull it down for you on here. So, the percentage of sales attributable to new products, and we've got to give your answers to two decimal places. So, multiplied by 100 equals 1.666 recurring on there. So, you've got to make a decision now as to do we go 1.66 or do we go 1.67? And this is another key area for you to be aware of for your exam. So, let me put it on here, one point. 66 gets the mark 1.67 also gets the mark on there 
Now, technically speaking, it should be 1.67. However, there is some leniency. You just got to work it through as to it. If it was me in the exam, I would be putting 1.67 personally because I'm rounding that third six there up in the next uh, to the second decimal. So by having a six there in the third decimal, that makes the second decimal, the second six, an actual seven to two decimal places, 1.67 uh, that you can see on the screen there. So this is where now we're all good on that. We don't need the calculator now for the last one on here because we're asked about to complete the following explanation of a balanced scorecard on there. So that's looking at um, the internal and external processes within a business. If, if you haven't had a look at the actual sort of diagram already, where well, it depends on which core text you've got, how it's broken up, but it concentrates on internal and external uh, processes, how we can get the business to perform better on there. And if you want, if you're in need of some extra resources for your management accounting exam, uh, just check out the link in the description below. It's got all the core text that I recommend down there that will help you pass. But coming on to task three now, we've been asked about a balanced scorecard measures performance of four perspectives. And this is where it's a case of do you, uh, do you remember and do you understand the actual uh, balanced scorecard format on here, how it's all laid out? They've got the customers, innovation, learning, financial, and this is where you've got to be having a look on it. Now, I did give you a little clue as I walked and talked you through at the start as to there are uh, actual internal uh, factors and processes and external factors and processes. So you can see on there that we've actually been given the final one of internal business process because the other two are processing flexibility well that's look at that i mean that's far too vague think about it logically in your exam you've got customers innovation learning financial and process flexibility it just doesn't sound right does it and non-financial success uh, in terms of a balanced scorecard that again just doesn't seem logical so weigh it out and there you go internal business process on there even coming on to the final one uh, the actual scorecard is balanced in that it requires managers to do what? First, deliver performance in all four areas. Offset bad performance in one area with good performance in another. And again, think logically. Is a manager actually going to do that on there? And haha, if you know some managers that are actually pretty bad in where you work, maybe. I don't know. Um, but in theory, you've got to then go and say, well... You can't have that as a manager's actual performance that you go, right, if, if one thing's really bad, then I'm going to try and make something else really good on there. And you want to actually optimise all different areas of the balance scorecard, both internally and externally. So it's not the second option. And then finally, to, uh, to achieve on an, equal, uh, on an equal number of KPIs in each perspective. Now, think about this from a sort of hierarchy of a business where... In terms of KPIs, these are really what the sort of board of directors are setting for the annual reports. A manager is actually more sort of on the lines of the day-to-day -day processes and uh, perspectives of the business internally and externally, hence the processes of a, of a balanced scorecard. The KPIs are more sort of board of directors on there that they, they're, they're going to be factored in elsewhere. So they're more interested in the balanced scorecard that it requires managers to deliver performance in all four areas for me on there and that nicely takes you through 10 out of 10 on a nice ratio analysis and balance scorecard question and these are the sort of uh, workings and ways to sort of break it down that are definitely going to help you pass your management accounting exam i hope you enjoyed today's video if you have be sure to give it a massive like and thumbs up below. As ever, thank you so much for all the support for the channel. Leave me a comment below how you're getting on with your revision. And if you've got any other management accounting requests that I can help with. Um, and then finally, as ever, so that you get access to all my free videos to help you through your ACCA journey. Just subscribe at the bottom because you know from watching this through, it could be the difference in picking up those little marks that could be 50 plus compared to getting not the 50 and having to reset, which you definitely do not want to do. But as always on that bombshell, we'll see you next time. Cheers.